Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Paul, and I am a nerd, and you are here for the June 2018 Practice Master Virtual User Group Meeting, where today we are talking about backup. Mary Jo is going to tell you everything you ever wanted to know about backup, plus more probably. And I'm going to talk about file types, the different types of files that you can add to Practice Master and where they come into play and where they do not. But first, I do want to mention that version 19 is about to be released. We don't know exactly when yet, but it's almost here. So if you're ready for it, but you're not adventurous, you can just wait. Sometime over the next several months, you will get an email that says that version 19 is ready for you to update to. Of course, that's assuming that you're on, on maintenance. Uh, if you're feeling adventurous, you can still go to tabs3.com slash pre-release, all one word, pre-release, and uh, fill out the form, and they'll send you a contract that really just says that you agree to, to, to get it a little bit early, and uh, you can have it before everybody else does. Not before we do. We've had it for months, but before most everybody else does, and that counts for something. And so without further ado, I am going to press all the buttons that have to do with getting out of PowerPoint and get back into Practice Master in some state where Mary Jo can talk <laughs> about Backup. Some state. That Some sort of there. state. There we go. <laughs> All right. So we have a couple of different ways that we back up. Um, and you, most firms have some kind of a nightly backup that they do with their IT company that backs up your entire server and all of that. And, and the internal backups that we have within all of our programs are not meant to replace those backups. Those are things that are important and those need to be done. So I just want to be clear on that, that that's, that's not doing away with those. We still want those. But what the internal backups get um, for you within the programs, and depending on what version you have, if you have a platinum version versus a, a non-platinum version, um, we'll, we'll back up just the um, information in the Tab 3 Practice Master software. It, it, and it's only going to be the data files and, and certain things. It's not everything in the whole program, but it's the important stuff. Now, it's not going to back up your documents. Your documents are stored on a server drive, and those are, are, are somewhere else, and that would be included in your nightly backup that you would do with your IT um, department. But it will, it will back up all the data files that you have, so your client lists and, and, and all of your different files that you have in here that you save information to. So when do you get these backups, and when should we make them, and, and when shouldn't we? And, and what's the difference in a backup with platinum and non-platinum? So we get these questions all the time. Now, you can always go into File, and you can go to Backup. And in this case, I'm in a platinum version, so it says Hot Backup. And I can make one of these anytime I want to. But there are some features that you do that before you go to run a, a certain um, program in the, in, in, within there, what's that program, what do I want to do, a certain function, I guess, within the program, it will ask you and prompt you to make a backup, whether it's a hot backup or it's not. Um, and that's important. We don't want to just ignore those all the time. Now, there's some little changes that you're doing and you're like, okay, I just want to make this quick change and it's fine. Other things, if, it, the, if something gets interrupted in the middle of doing something and um, your, your computer crashes or somebody hits a pull out front and, and you're in the middle of updating statements, for instance, and you didn't make that internal backup, you've just lost everything that you, you, you cannot keep going unless you restore from a backup within the program here or a nightly backup from the night before. So those backups could be very important depending on what we're doing. So let's, let's look at a couple of things here. So um, in Practice Master, probably not so critical. I know the, the biggest thing in tabs is the updating statements and unupdating statements, and um, that's in the billing side of things. And those two things I know for sure, if you get interrupted for any reason, you have to restore somehow, either from an internal or an outside backup. But in Practice Master, maybe not quite so much, but maybe your backup was the night before, and let's say you have them running at midnight, and it's, I don't know, 11 o'clock in the, in the morning, and something happens, and you're in the middle of something, and you lose something, and you want to restore from a backup. Or you change something, and you didn't mean to change it, and you didn't make a backup. You've got to go all the way back to midnight of the night before, so you've just lost all of your morning's worth of work. 
So if you're making a big change in Practice Master, let's say you're importing data or you're going and doing some, some major change to renaming contacts or something like that, and you didn't make that internal backup before you began, it's going to be a lot more difficult to get back to where you were before you started, and you may lose other data in the meantime because it may be an older backup that you're going to. I've had some firms that something as catastrophic has happened where you know, they lost power or their server crashed, they lost all their data, and their last backup was months ago. They didn't have one. So it's very important to have backups as much as you can. I, I don't, I'm a proponent of you can never have too many and too many different kinds. But within the program, if I were doing, um, let's say, file maintenance, for instance, I'm just going to grab that, this is prompting me and asking me, do I want to make this backup? Now, if I did not have platinum, I would not get this hot backup, and the difference would be I would need to get everybody out of the program to be able to make this backup. And not just Practice Master. I would have to get everybody out of all of the programs to make the backup because whenever we make a backup, it's backing up everything. It's not just going to be a Practice Master backup or a Tabs backup or a GL backup. Whenever we make a backup, it backs up all of the programs at one time. It's a lump sum. You get everything at once. So in a non-platinum version, that means everybody's got to exit out for me to do this. If I were going to do a data file integrity check or re-index files, I guess would be another one that I would need to get everybody out if I want to make that backup beforehand. So we want to do these things early morning, late afternoon, whenever you have to do that, if you have non-platinum. One of the major benefits of having platinum is we have the hot backup feature. And that means I can make this backup whenever I want to, whenever anybody is working, and it will go ahead and back up my data whenever I'm doing those things. So I don't have to have people exit the program. The other nice thing about hot backup is they can be scheduled. So I can set up on my scheduler in system configuration that I always want backups um, to run at noon and midnight every day. And I would always have at least half a day's back up if I had to restore my, my tabs or practice master program. And again, when I restore, it also restores everything. So if you make a mistake in practice master and you have to restore, understand that you're going to be restoring everything that's happened in tabs, everything that's happened in AP, everything that's happened in GL from that point in time where that backup is being restored from. So it's again, a restore is a lump sum just like a backup is a lump sum. You're getting everything. So you want to understand that and be very careful. And again, if, even though you're making these scheduled hot backups, I would still make another one. If this last backup hadn't run since noon and it's already 2 o'clock, I'm going to run another one if I'm doing something big. I'm just going to go ahead and replace that. Now, hot backups are stored. Um, you can configure this however you want to. Um, but generally, the out-of-the-box settings are it will store four of the most recent backups and two archived. And it will just keep moving those and shuffling them so the, the oldest is going to fall off and be replaced with the next one and so on. So that you can always have at least six backups that you could go back to if you needed to. Now, sometimes storage is an issue, so some people modify that and they'll have a few less. That's up to you. But that can be configured and that can always be on a firm by firm basis for whatever you need. So backups are important. It's easier to make them when you have Platinum because you've got the hot backup feature. You can do that when everybody is um, in the system in any time that you want to. Whereas the non-Platinum, you do need to have a user's exit. And then there are some specific things that I would be very careful to do all the time, um, such as updating and um, unupdating statements uh, in billing. Uh, and then it's just a really good um, way that within this, you don't have to restore your entire system or call your IT person um, per se to go get the last night's backup off of their servers. You can restore and just get your practice master information uh, or your tab tree practice master information back. So very important. Did you want to add anything, Paul? Well, one thing I would point out is that in Platinum, you do have this little uh, stoplight that will be either red, yellow, or green to show you how important it would be to make that backup. In other words, the thing you're about to do, if it's interrupted, um, could, in this instance, could cause catastrophic data loss. So they're saying it's really important to back up. Okay. Other certain things that you might do that if they were interrupted, it's not quite so important or not quite so dangerous, um, they're going to have a green or a yellow. 
Um, Mary Jo's trying to find one. I'm trying one. to find one that's <laughs> green or yellow. I don't know which ones are green or yellow. Yeah, I'm not case. sure which ones are either. Uh, remember, yeah, they're, yeah, they're all red. Yeah, they're all red here, but there are some that are green or yellow. Um, the other thing to, to consider is, well, you're thinking, okay, well, I'm going to update statements and tabs, let's say. Well, I got to kick people out for that. Why do I care if I'm kicking people out of out of um, out of practice master, out, out of a, out for a backup? A couple things. Your backup may take 15 minutes. Updating statements may take 30 seconds. So you have to decide whether you want to tell the partners that they have to get out of the software um, for 15 minutes and 30 seconds, or that they have to get out for 30 seconds. The other thing to remember is a backup, as Mary Jo pointed out, will back up everything. So everybody has to be out. Although I don't think everybody has to be out of Practice Master to update statements. So you can run a hot backup, leave your attorneys and paralegals producing work in Practice Master while the backup's running, go do your updates, which doesn't cost you cause you to kick them out of Practice Master, still with that peace of mind that your backup has. Well, run. hot backups, they don't need to kick anybody out anyway. Um, you just said hot backup. No, I'm a sorry. Regular, a regular backup. If you have don't have class. platinum and you want to update statements and tabs and you want a backup, you still have to kick people out of Practice That's Master right. to do the backup, even though you wouldn't have had to kick them out to do the update. Yeah. And I do have firms that they they don't um, because it's too difficult to get people out. They need to update statements, so they don't do these backups. But I I can't tell you how many calls I get where. You know, the power did go out. The storm went through, and the power they were lost, or their server connection was lost. Or in one instance, I had one of the billing um, ladies had accidentally kicked her power strip underneath her desk and shut off her computer in the middle of updating statements. It, it, we've we've heard it all. I mean, there's there's all kinds of things that can happen. And most of the time, I would say probably 99% of the time, you're going to be fine. But the one time that you didn't back up and it happens, it's, it's a big deal it's and it, it is a killer. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's that risk take that, you know, it's a chance that you take, but. Exactly. Yep. My father used to bring his dog to the office and then that dog turned off the power on the computer more times than I think he'd care to admit. Okay. So I'm going to talk about different files. Well, what do I mean by that? Did, did you know that Practice Master is customizable, that you can add files? For instance, um, I am going to go into this matter for Daniel Klein, and when I do, let's actually go back out here and find a different client. I'm going to go into one of Kelly White's divorce matters. Well, not one of them. Kelly White didn't get divorced more than once. She is just a fake person, but we want to treat her right. And we'll find all sorts of files that come into play because this is a divorce matter. Spouse information, children of marriage, previous marriage history. If we go up to um, her last will or down to her last will and testament, those files are not there. Instead, we see things like um, owners and properties and notes receivable and business interests. These are all related to estate planning. Okay, So that's one type of file. Well, what do I mean by file? Well, if we go to other assets, it's actually a different, it's a file if I were to add a record. I'm adding a record to the other assets file, and I'm doing such that it's tied to Kelly White's matter, but this is a file that holds other assets for all the estate planning clients. Now, a different type of file in Practice Master is uh, we commonly will put in what we call the people file. We did the people, f yep, where is it? Thank you. I always have trouble finding it because it goes different places on different systems. Um, this is a file that's there no matter what area of practice. Every file, every matter, every client and client matter is going to have a P, uh, people file records tied to it, uh, whether it's divorce or uh, uh, estate planning or insurance defense or litigation, whatever. It's, they're all going to have people files. Okay. So those are the two types of files I'm talking about. Now, another thing that people sometimes think are files are these things that you find on these tabs, like budget or wills one. This is a demo system, so it's got a lot of weird stuff in here, like the ignore tab um, or the details tab. These aren't going to be stored in a separate file. These fields are stored in the client file. How can you tell the difference? When you go to the people file tab, you get to the ability 
to list multiple people for this particular matter. So instead of going straight to data for a specific person, you go to a list first. That indicates that it's a separate file that holds separate records that are tied back to this matter. Whereas if I go to the details or the court tab, I go straight to data. I don't have an intervening list. I don't have a, a list of courts. I just go to the court information because there's only one court. So data that needs to be stored for a matter that you want to add because it's not already there, that is singular in nature, actually goes in the client file. And it can even be defined in such a way that it only shows up for certain areas of practice. For instance, there might be a, a list of important dates that shows up for estate planning matters. And so there would be a important dates tab if it was an estate planning matter and it would take you straight to the data. It wouldn't be a file, meaning those fields are stored in the client file, not in a separate file, but it only should, that tab only shows up for estate planning matters. So it's important to understand the distinction between adding a file in Practice Master and adding fields from the client file to a specific tab. Now what we're really looking at here is adding a file. So I'm going to back up and I'm going to go out to the data structure and I'm just going to show you that there are subdirectories under your tabs folders, your Practice Master folder. Uh, our tabs Practice Master folder in this instance is called STINFR. This is our not for resale copy of tabs. And underneath it we have a CM system file folder and we have folders for the different areas of practice, real estate, probate, personal injury, foreclosure. So if that file is one that only applies to a certain area of practice, it's going to end up in one of these folders. Foreclosure doesn't have any special files. If we look at the estate planning, or I believe it's called wills, well, they're, they're, they're uh, that's right, they're stored in different places, okay. Uh, and then CM system is where the other files go. But you don't really care about that. What you really care about is how you get to them and how you define them. So if we go into, and I have to close things first because if I try and go into file maintenance without things closed, it'll complain. I am not going to make a backup. Do as I say, not as I do. And this is where those files get added. So if we were to add a regular old file like the people file or a file that we want to appear as a tab for any client, regardless of what area of practice they fall into, all I have to do is right click and say add common client related file. If I wanted to add an AOP specific file, I'd have to first find the AOP, the area of practice. Let's say we're going to add something to wills and trusts. We would right click on wills and trusts and we would add a new AOP file. Now if I were to, if I wanted to know if that file is already there, I can click this little plus sign and it will expand or contract that list of files under wills and trusts. Now let's just pretend we're going to do a common client related file real quick. Uh, and we don't usually go into details about how we do this sort of stuff because this isn't user related. This is more admin related, but some of our users want to know. So I was going to add a file to hold information on um, ACS employees that are tied to this matter. I, I give it a name. I give it a long name. And then I get into the part where I design the fields. So if I wanted that file to hold uh, the name of the employee and it's going to be a, uh, and I'm going to make it uh, a contact, link to the contact file, that's what I would do. Now I'm not going to get into adding fields and defining indexes, but I'm going to go ahead and say I'm done. It's done adding the file. I'm going to get out of here. Oops, I meant to say close. And now if I go into the client file, I'm also going to have a tab called ACS Employee Info. And when I click on it, I'm taken to a list because remember we added a file. And so therefore, whatever I define to be in that file is now what it's going to ask for. And so if I say Purdue, I have just defined Paul Purdue as being one of the employees from Attorney Computer Systems that's tied to this matter. And that's that.
So the real thing I wanted to point out is that you can add these files. Now, if you haven't already guessed it, you can also go into the files that are already there and mess with them. Mess with them is probably not the right phrase to be using. You can go in there and you can change or add fields of information that would be would be would be stored in that file. And you definitely want to make a backup before you do that. Yep, exactly. That's a good example. That's a good good segue into why we do a backup. Um, we do not make file related changes or file maintenance related changes at any client without having a backup. It's just a a rule. And so we've never had a problem. Uh, and naturally, the first time that we don't make a backup is when we're going to have a problem. So we're just going to keep our practice in, in play of making a backup, and we will never have a problem doing that. Um, I really wanted you to know, the main thing to understand is that there are different types of files you can add. Some can be specific to an area of practice and only show up for that area of practice. Some can be specific to all matters. If you happen to have a file that's applicable in both this area of practice and that area of practice, but not any of the others, you have to make a decision because you would have to create two area of practice files, one in this area of practice, one in that area of practice. I also wanted you to understand that you can add these files. So if there are things you need to keep track of that there aren't tabs to keep track of right now, uh, it's very possible to do that. And then the last thing I wanted to, to emphasize is that you can go in and do this all yourself. You don't need us. As long as you understand what you're doing, you may get a little help from STI. You may get a little help from us. But this is all accessible by you. We are not the wizards and the only people that can do this stuff for you. STI is not the only people that know how to go in and change this. You can do it. That's the beauty of Practice Master is that you have the ability to customize it and make it do things that uh, it didn't come, come out of the box prepared to do. Okay. Um, of course, I would be remiss if at the end of a virtual user group meeting I didn't take you to attorneycomputersystems.com. Notice, of course, that I am emphasizing the last S in the word systems because without it you won't get there. If you click on videos, you will be taken to a list of all of our video titles. I'm going to scroll down a little. We have uh, four live events that we uh, record each month and we also have some uh, filmed uh, video uh, content that we also record on a monthly basis. We'll start with that. Mary Jo has her eBytes video series. She records three of these each month, one on tabs, one on Practice Master, one on World Docs. They are very short. They're two, three, sometimes four minutes long. We take something really cool that we can explain very quickly, and Mary Jo tells you about it. For those longer, broader topics, it might take a little bit more time to uh, dive deeply into the, you know, the the, the the inner workings of whatever it is we're talking about. For those topics, we have the Paul and Mary Jo Show, where either I or Mary Jo will take one of those topics and spend 10, 15, sometimes 20 minutes going into great detail about that particular topic and all the intricate uh, things that you need to consider when, when dealing with that. And then, of course, we have our live events. You are currently in the Practice Master Virtual User Group meeting. Uh, we also have a virtual user group meeting for tabs and one for World Docs. And I also have a monthly webinar series that we give called the Coffee Pot Webinars, where I invite somebody in from another company, uh, not tabs uh, or Practice Master or World Docs, but with a product that adds value to or enhances one of those three products. Uh, and we will talk to them about their product. They'll explain how it works, uh, give pricing information if it's appropriate. And uh, it's a great way to learn about things that are out there that, that add value. Uh, if you click on any of these titles on the More Info button, we'll go into Practice Master because that's, uh, that's where we are now, you'll see a very brief description of the actual Practice Master Virtual User Group meeting. And then usually at the top, you'll have registration info for the next live event along with links, um, two of them, that both take you to the same place, but some people like to see what they're clicking on, so there's that one there. Uh, and then as you scroll down, you will find recorded versions of everything else we've ever done before then. So here's where we are right now. These are This is the current virtual user group meeting that we are taping right now. It's not out there yet. It'll take it, uh, several days, maybe a week or so, to get out there. But then as we scroll down, we have recorded versions of everything else. So you can kind of take a, a leisurely stroll through the content and, and just look at what's there kind of in a browsing mode. Or if you have a specific thing you want to ask about, like, uh, oh, I don't know, emailing statements, you can just type it in the search box and hit enter or pick from the quick list that comes up and go straight to that content. 
So please, these are available seven days a week, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. Uh, they, they never close. They're there for you all the time. Uh, I've heard stories of people having a, a glass of wine each night and watching a practice master video or sitting by the fire with their laptop listening to tabs three videos. Sounds a little strange to me, but it's there and that's what it's for. It's for you to explore. So please do that. Everybody have a good rest of the day and a good rest of the month and we will see you next month. Thanks much.